quick oversight for people that want to see where to hook up a mechanical boost gauge. Uh, that would be one that runs a boost line and or vacuum line up to the dash. This particular vehicle runs both a digital one and a mechanical one. If you're running digital, you would be running off of this sensor here, which in this case it's piggybacked between a JB4 and this sensor, so there's actually an extra pigtail. It's all kind of a mess because I'm doing some stuff. But there's one wire here. It'd be the white one. Do you need to posi tap into? That is a 0.5 to 4.5 volt scaled uh, analog output. So if you were doing digital, you would tie there, which is less common. A more common one is just one that runs off a of straight boost pressure, uh, also known as a mechanical gauge. So if you were to run a mechanical gauge, you need to come up here to this distribution. This is a solenoid. This is your output, and these are the two options. The solenoid is either on this line or this line. So if you are under throttle and you're moving, most of the time you will be on this line. If you let off the throttle and it needs to blow off the pressure in the line, it's going to go to this line. This line here is vacuum. This line here is boost. Only vacuum, only boost. And then the output line can be vacuum or boost, depending on where the actual um, output of the solenoid is hooked up to. The reason this one is only vacuum and it is not plenum pressure is because it comes up here. There's a little chamber here. That's where it keeps a little bit of extra vacuum so that when the solenoid switches, it has enough vacuum pressure built up to pull up both stock blow off valves. Um, this here is a check valve. This little thing with the green on it is a check valve that only allows vacuum to come through and it does not allow boost to come through, which is why I had mentioned that this is only a vacuum line. If you wanted vacuum and boost, you would need to tie into this line up here, which is kind of a pain, but if that's what you wanted to do. But if you're going to tie into a uh, vacuum gauge, you're going to need to run a, uh, a hose, usually they come with one, like this. Uh, you can also go to another parts store and get windshield wiper fluid, I think it's 5.30 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, but you'll want to look that one up. Um, it's just windshield wiper hose, you want to get some of that. And then what you're going to do, most people don't need to see vacuum. Technically you could hook here and you might see vacuum, but you're going to see strictly boost or strictly vacuum. I would just go with simply boost. You don't really need vacuum if there's a problem. Um, vacuum usually shows you if there's a problem. This car will light up like a Christmas tree if there is a problem. So this line here, this lower one, you're going to need to disconnect that. This top barb here is plastic. You need to be very careful. Um, it's not very strong and you can snap that off. And then this lower one, which is right there, is metal. It is a little stronger and a little more resilient, but again, you want to really take your time when you're pulling these off. I already pre-pulled them so that we don't have to break it on video and look stupid. But uh, take the hose off. This is not the stock hose. I've replaced it a few times. Uh, this one's actually getting ran for the methanol controller that runs off of uh, vacuum and boost. So you're going to take the line off and you're going to go ahead and cut it. I chose to cut mine in the center because it works for the height there. I'm going to run uh, my line backwards underneath the thing. And then some kits include it and some kits do not. You can look up on Amazon boost gauge, hose kits and stuff. And some of them will include a uh, plethora of different fittings. This one has a T, a Y. Um, the only difference between a T and a Y is if you had uh, a more specific route and you didn't want it to be a perfect 90. And then some unions. So we're going to use a T, a little bit of glass cleaner, or something that will dissolve on or uh, evaporate on its own and not leave a residue, preferably. Uh, on that, you can push the hoses on. Sometimes you can get them on without that, but it's purely up to you. I'd recommend putting your supply line on the T before installing it here. That way you're not, you know, reaching down here, trying to get it to plug on and end up breaking this off. This one here is going to be your, your number one enemy when it comes to breaking because it is plastic. It's very thin. Um, so I've already attached a line that I plan to run that way. There's currently a line here. I just got to patch it back together more or less. As you're putting it on, try to slip it on to the nipple as far as you can. Now, since we added that T, the line is now longer. 
You don't want it to be super tight because you're talking about a 90 degree angle here, but you don't want it hitting this fan shroud either. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to trim a little bit off. Once you trim something off, obviously you can't make the hose longer. So I would start with say quarter inch at a time until when you hold this here, it's nice and short and it stays away from that stuff, but it's not kinked. And there we have it. You have plenty of clearance here. It's not going to hit. Now I'm going to take this hose and I'm going to run it this way. Um, currently I have another piece of hose here where I had had it ran previously and then I just switched over to the digital and now I got to put the methanol controller back together. There is a bit of a debate that's always happened um, on these barb fittings whether or not you need a clamp. Couldn't hurt certainly to do it um, on these ones here. They were a little on the loose side so I used small zip ties that would work. Uh, most of these, they don't come off. There's not a lot of PSI, that is pounds per square inch. These lines are very small, so the cumulative pressure on it isn't great. But it will cause a boost leak if you end up getting one of these to fall off. So it, it certainly couldn't hurt if you don't mind to go ahead and do that. But that sums it up as to how to hook up the boost line for a mechanical boost gauge.